Hi everybody, TJ Mack of Vintage Cards and Nostalgia here. Patience is a virtue. Yes, that saying is cliche, but it doesn't mean there is no truth to it. There's a sense of strength to patience. The ability to slow down, to contemplate, to focus. To not be rash, but rather to plan. To know what you want and how you're going to get there. To not view missing out on an opportunity as a failure, but rather as something that was not meant to be, as other opportunities will likely present itself. Now to equate that to collecting, to have to narrow a focus, that can really test your patience, as missed opportunities sting more because you may have to wait a while before you get another chance. Then there's having too broad a focus, which can lead to being more impulsive as there are so many items to choose from that it can become a challenge to focus on larger goals within your collection. And you can also find yourself overpaying for items or add items that over time you really don't want. Now I think many of us collectors are searching for that balance between acquiring items so we have mail days to look forward to, but are also looking to add a card here and there that may reach the upper end of our budget sometimes, but it also helps us build a collection that includes some of the bigger cards in the hobby. And one of the channels I enjoy listening to is the Rated Rabbi. I have mentioned him before, and I will once again put a link to his channel in my description. Now, I please consider checking him out because I think he puts out some of the best videos on YouTube when it comes to reflecting on your collection. He is smart, he's funny, and he's entertaining. And I enjoy listening to him when I'm taking a walk because he often gets me thinking about how I hobby. And I like that. Now, Rabbi Dave is around my age and he's been back in the hobby for a pretty short time. And like many collectors, he returned sometime during COVID. Now, he often talks about striving to have a small, beautiful, and meaningful collection. One that includes some pretty big cards. And right now, for example, he has a goal of acquiring the 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth with the red background. He has sold off some cards in his collection that have less meaning to help him move closer to this goal. He also speaks about being consistent in his principles as a collector which is important if he wants to achieve his goal of having a small and beautiful collection. Now, Rabbi Dave, he doesn't strike me as a person with deep pockets for buying baseball cards, but he gets to where he wants to go with, yes, that's right, patience. Now, I have two cards that I want to show today that speak to the patience I strive to exhibit as a collector. Yes, I sometimes fall short, but these are two instances where I got it right. The first is this 1961 Topps Leo Boyvin card. Now this is just a beautiful card with that pale pink and the artistic hockey player renderings that grace the background makes this set a favorite of mine. Now I could not wait to place this card next to my 1961 Topps Bobby Hall and Andy Bathgate. Look at the array of colors exhibited by these cards. Now, Boyvin is a Hall of Fame defenseman who played from 1951 to 1970. He starred mainly with the Boston Bruins and helped them get through some of the tough years of rebuilding in the early 1960s prior to the arrival of Bobby Orr. He was made team captain in 1963. Now, Leo was a small guy, standing about 5'7", but he was a hard hitter who was known for popping a guy up whenever he bumped into him. Now, the famed coach and media personality, the great Don Cherry, talked about the time when he was a teammate of Boyvin's, and Cherry was having a hard time as a player. Everybody was mad at him for his play, and not much was going right for him. And one day he was at Boston camp, and it was picture day, and they would place this long wire that ran across the ice. It was used to power the lamp to take the pictures. Now the coaches would tell the players, don't skate near the wire. So what does Cherry do? He accidentally skates towards the wire and he severs it in half 
with the blade of his skate. Now the coaches and photographers are irate. Cherry is thinking, what else can go wrong for me? And suddenly, Boyvin skates over and says, don't worry, Don, I can fix it. It turns out Leo was not only a future Hall of Fame defenseman, but he was also an electrician. He repaired the wire, and photo day went on as planned. Now that is what I love about players from this era. They were relatable before the big money separated them from the fans. Now anyway, there are only 123 Leo Boyvin cards graded by PSA. And it doesn't come up frequently in the condition I want it in. And there's only about 50 in the grade 6 to 7.5 range. And I've lost out on this card twice before over the past year and a half. And then finally this one came up. That's about a $30 to $35 card in this condition, which isn't going to break the bank for most collectors. But I just didn't bid high enough previously. However, I remained patient and was finally able to acquire the card for about $28. Now, I know there may be exceptions with very rare cards that you really have to jump on or you're going to miss out on it. But I'll be honest with you, that's not the collecting lane I swim in. For the cards I collect, I choose to patiently stroll along until another opportunity arises. And for some reason, if the card happens to never come along again in the condition I want, or I get priced out, which has happened with some cards over the years, then so be it. Life goes on. Age and experience has taught me that. Now, as a collector, I will always find a way to make my hobby enriching and meaningful. The next card I want to show is an example of how I set aside money in my budget to add a bigger card from time to time. Now, what constitutes a big card varies from collector to collector, but this 1948 Leaf rookie card of running back Doak Walker is one for me. Doak is not only a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but he's also a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. And I've been really getting into the 1948 and 1949 Leaf football sets. Now I'll do a little deeper dive into these sets in a future video. But all the cards in the 1949 set are also featured in the 1948 set, but the opposite's not true. There are several cards depicting players in college, such as this Doak Walker card, that are not in the 1949 set. This is one of the more coveted cards in the set, and was one that really stretched my budget. Now I'm softening some when it comes to sharing prices. It was something that I didn't really like to do much with my channel because I really don't ever want to come across as gloating or as if money is something that I'm overly focused on, which is very important to me. I, I don't want to come across that way because it's really not. However, this is my 236th video, and if you've been watching my channel, I hope you realize by now that is not the kind of collector that I am. So I will share that this card cost me about $200. And it was on my short list of bigger cards I was targeting this year. It just doesn't come up very often in a condition I'm looking for. And I'm thrilled with this one. The yellow, blue, and red are so vibrant, which can be a challenge with this issue. And similar to Leaf Baseball, there are different color variations on some of the cards, including this Walker, where there's an extremely rare white background version. And I just... Love how this card looks next to my 1949 Bob Waterfield. It's that uh, comic book art at its best, in my opinion. Now, both the Boyvin and Walker cards are expressions of my patience as a collector. Now, there are times I've stumbled along the way and have made mistakes. Like recently, I, not too long ago, I bought a 1961 Fleer Paul Horning card and had a big print line going right across his face, which is really one of the only things that drive me crazy is when it really distorts the image that way when you have a print line across the face. I don't mind it in other spots on the card, but that wouldn't really distract me. And I saw the card on a buy it now for a good price, and I, I jumped on it without looking at it closely. And this card that I have, this Paul Horning, is going to remain in my collection, and I'll show it another time as a reminder to take my time and be patient. For most of us who have regular jobs in a family, 
it really does take time to build the collection of our dreams. It takes sacrifice, saving, and yes, patience. Now, of course, no argument for patience can be complete without least one mention of the age-old fable of the tortoise and the hare. We admire the skills and the methods of the speedy hare, but we want the results of the tortoise. If we truly want the collection that we desire, we, we can't rush it. We must maintain that slow and steady tortoise pace. Until next time, I hope everybody has a great weekend.